Hello Denverites, potential future Denverites, or just beautiful people all over the world watching this. Welcome to Things to Know, Places to Go, Lakewood Edition. If you're not familiar with Lakewood, you're probably looking at this being like, where the freaking heck is this dude? I thought Lakewood was in Denver. Yes, it is a city in Denver. This is just a huge, awesome, beautiful park on Bellamar Park, which I'll talk about more in a moment. But if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're new to things to know, places to go video series, it's where I take a community in Denver and break down all the things I think you should know about the area, the good and the bad. Then I give you places to go in the form of my favorite local coffee shop you should go to in the community, food spot, and a fun local thing to do so you can live life as a local in this community and learn as much as you can. Once again, my name is Tori Trick. I'm a Denver realtor. Oh yeah, and then I top all that cool stuff off. I give you the things to know, places to go. I'm gonna top it off with some real estate fast facts, things I think you should know about a certain community in the real estate market. But before we get to all that good stuff, let's talk about where Lakewood is. Lakewood is west of Denver, and it's very, very long east to west. We'll talk about more about what that means for you living here. Uh, but you're about 20 minutes from downtown Denver, 20 minutes from Golden, about 45 minutes to Boulder, and about 15 to 30 minutes away from the mountains, depending on where the mountains are going and where in Lakewood you're starting from. But overall, you're really close to Denver, you're really close to Golden, you're really close to the mountains, but you don't have to pay the prices as if you were in those areas. That's a big reason. And Lake, uh, Lakewood is popular. You have access to Denver, you got access to the mountains, you got access to Golden. Boulder is a little further away, you still have access to, and you have all the freeways around you, which is good and bad because you have relatively easy access to freeways. It also means it brings more traffic um, into the community as well, or if you're trying to get out of the community. Like if you're in Lakewood trying to go to Denver, you're probably gonna take six, and six can get pretty darn congested because it's a pretty small and tight road. So that gives you a pretty good idea of where Lakewood is located and how easily you can get around. Let's talk about things to know. Number one, proximity to the mountains. You, don't, you can't really see it on camera, but these are crazy beautiful mountain views. Really, really pretty. You, since you are west of Denver, you are, are of course closer to the mountains with clumps, clumps comes with pros and cons. The pros being basically every time you're driving west or just looking west, you have gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mountain views. But that does also mean that weather can fluctuate more. When you're closer to the mountains, weather can fluctuate up to, to 40 degrees in a single day. Now that's not common, but that's the range you can get. And even if you get half of that, that's still a really, really big fluctuation. So weather can fluctuate a lot the closer you are to the mountains. And weather is more severe, meaning like if it's snowing, you're gonna get more snow if you're closer to the mountains. If it's windy, you're likely going to get more wind if it's closer to the mountains etc etc whatever the current weather conditions are the closer you are to the mountains like you are in lakewood you're going to get a more intense version of that most of the time well there's the wind i was saying is a little bit more severe the closer you are to the mountains i'm gonna wait for that to stop so i actually popped into this gazebo um because i couldn't this, this got a weird cloudy day today in denver and when the sun comes out i literally can't keep my eyes open because the, the sun reflecting off the pavement anyway we're in this gazebo now it's where we're filming the video thing to know number two about Lakewood is that there's the wind again. Thing to know number two is you have Bell Mar Shopping Center. Now, something to know about Lakewood is it's a really big suburb that doesn't really have a central downtown, like a central place that that's where you go for the cool restaurants, the cool coffee shops. I've told my clients before who I've helped buy houses here and they've confirmed I was right, is that Lakewood is very spread out. It is uh, not a super well-planned city because once it's just very, very big and it's easy for your errands to be running all across town except for enter thing to know number two belmar shopping center belmar shopping center is like an outdoor mall um that's really you know fun because it's restaurants coffee shops um breweries um, in Belmar shopping center but then around like immediately outside of it is like literally everything you would need king supers whole foods sprouts walgreens cvs liquor stores targets all literally right there so if you can go to belmar shopping center you can knock out every errand on earth right there but if you need anything outside of belmar shopping center it could be pretty easy to start running all across lakewood uh just because of how spread out it is now one of the things i do like about belmar shopping center is that the outdoor mall itself is like in one spot and then all those you know grocery stores and other places for your errands are directly outside of it so if you're just going to the belmore shopping center to have a good time you're not going to get caught up in all the foot traffic of people running their errands because those things are strung across outside of it and belmore shopping center is just Belmar Shopping Center itself. On a side note, the French Press is a cafe, bakery, restaurant in Belmar Shopping Center that has the best Americano I've ever had. 
How is the rest of the menu? I have no idea, but the Americanos are really good. Thing to know number three is half a mile from the Belmar Shopping Center is where I am right now, Belmar Park, which is 132 acres of, of, of hiking, walking, uh, little ponds, lakes, I think you'd call that a lake. Um, and it's a half a mile from Belmar Shopping Center. You, literally, if you look at this, you look like I'm in the middle of nowhere, but then you can see some buildings right there behind me. Uh, so this this Belmar uh, Park is really, really cool. Not to mention they have at the front of it what's called Historic Littleton, which has some buildings built in the 1800s that are original there or, or literally were brought over to create Historic Littleton. And literally it just is, you feel like you were dropped off in the 1800s with like old farm equipment, uh, old buildings. And the fun parts is they have plaques on pretty much all of these buildings that you can walk up to and read the history on the hotels there, the windmills, the, the, the tractor equipment. So it's not just a fun place to walk around. There's things to read and be like, wow, this building came from this part of Denver and has this history behind it. And another cool thing about this uh, Belmar Park in Lakewood is they use the, so real quick, look how bright it is now. It is so bright out there. I couldn't keep my eyes open, I bet. Um, Nope. Um, they use Belmar Park like crazy for events. They do uh, beer festivals, Christmas festivals, Halloween festivals, where they actually open up these uh, those old historic buildings. Where they actually open up those old historic buildings so people can go inside and vendors can set up shop in them. So it's really cool to you know come take a dog for a walk. I have a picnic here, or just go on a walk, um, hang out, and then they also have constant festivals here. So they use the absolute heck out of Bellamar Park, which is awesome because it's, it'd be if they didn't, it would be such a, a a waste of amazing space. The space is not a waste as it is, of course, but to not use it for events would be sad. And they use it for a ton of events. Like I said, beer, Halloween. Uh, they do a cider festival, I forget, I think, in Christmas, where they have like, you know, apple cider and different types of ciders and people from all over the country who make ciders come out and share it. There's hard cider, obviously. So once again, Belmar Park, really fun, really cool area. There's always things bringing you back here, aside from just the beautiful nature. I think that number four, there's a pretty big difference between West Lakewood and East Lakewood, in my opinion. The more West Lakewood you get, you're getting closer to the mountains and the roads get a little bit bigger. The houses are a little bit more spread out. You can get, it's not as cramped and crowded, um, but it is still pretty darn spread out. The more East Lakeside you get, it's the roads get a little bit more tighter. You feel like you're in the city a little bit more. So East Lakewood feels like you're in the city a little bit more. West Lakewood, while it's still very similar, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. Um, the, once again, you're closer to the mountains, so those views are really pretty. But overall, just more spread out is how I would describe West Lakewood. Which brings me to my final thing to know about Lakewood is that Lakewood is an older city. It's an older community. And I don't mean in a, in a uh, historic way. It's just a city that overall feels worn. It feels like it wasn't totally totally upkept. Some buildings have been really well maintained and some homes have been really well maintained and those are really pretty, really cool, but a lot of them haven't. So Lakewood, just the thing to know is that it's an older community, nothing wrong with that, but it just shows that age and it shows that wornness pretty much throughout the whole city. Well, that is things to know about Lakewood. I hope you found those things helpful. Let's talk about places to go. Now, if you're checking out Lakewood, like I said, the east side and the west side are very different energies and aesthetics to Lakewood. So I wanted to see both of those. So I'm gonna give you the restaurants gonna be on east side. The coffee shop's going to be on the more the west side. So where do you get coffee on the west side? Go to Hello Coffee and take Jewel all the way up. It's a really pretty drive. You're literally looking straight into a mountain. That covers where to get a good cup of coffee in Lakewood. And once again, you're really going to enjoy the drive up Jewel and seeing the differences between East and uh, West Lakewood. But after you have coffee, after you check out Belmore Shopping Center, where should you go once you're hungry for lunch? Let's go with a fun European restaurant. I want to give you a place that you're not really going to find anywhere else. And you are not going to find a place like this anywhere else. I would say Gabby's German eatery completely authentic german food it's a really fun location because it's off of if it's off a side it's off how's it going man it's off a uh, a main it's off a main road on down a side street that you probably would never turn down unless you had gps on for gabby's german eatery and then it's next to a whole bunch of houses and it literally looks like another house itself so unless you were looking for you just think it was another house so just it gets getting there is fun because you're going somewhere you probably wouldn't go without that gps a runner-up with a very different vibe more of an upscale vibe for an awesome place to get food in late.
Lakewood. I'm gonna get this pronunciation wrong. Is it Bruschi's? A Bruschi's Fire and Vine. It's a pizzeria that has a bit of more of an upscale feel. They have some really high-end wines, and they proudly boast that their oven it gets up to 850 degrees and cook and can cook your pizza in two minutes. So. That's pretty wild, but that's overall a really cool place as well. I like Gabby's German eatery because it's a very certain type of experience. And then a, a Bruschi's Fire and Vine is I like as well because you get a more upscale and uh, some pizza. And yes, they do serve wine, beer, and cocktails, so you can get your fancy on a little bit out of Bruschi's. I'm gonna commit to that pronunciation, Fire and Vine. There's the wind I was talking about. You definitely get more wind being closer to the mountains, which feels nice actually. It's not good for recording videos, but it feels very nice. Trust me, in the summer, you don't mind. And we're now filming the rest of the video for my car. The wind was relentlessly not going away, which actually felt really nice. I'm not trying to make Lakewood sound like windy and bad and terrible. It felt, one, normally, normally not that much wind. Number two, it felt lovely. It's just not good for video sound. So here we are, welcome to my car. Moving on, I think I just finished talking about the pizzeria, a little bit more upscale, wine, cocktail, beers, amazing uh, wood oven, pizza. I'm very disheveled from the wind. Here we go. And what is a fun local thing to do? Check out Everett Farms during Christmas time because they have like a choose your own Christmas tree farm, really, really big. Um, they do a gorgeous decoration. So come winter time, definitely check out Everett Farms because they do like ciders and hot chocolates, um, apple ciders, not those types of ciders adults. Um, and it's a really fun place for the whole family or just, you know, to go as a couple. And then the rest of the year, year you can check out, like I said, Belmar Park uh, in Lakewood. If you want a bit more adventure, go check out Bear Creek Lake, which is nearby. It has 2,600 acres of kayaking, lakes, rivers, hikes, uh, biking trails, camping spots, literally everything you'd want to do in the wild, you can do it in Bear Creek Lake. Which to me is like one of those only in Denver things, the fact that you can have Belmar Shopping Center, everything you need, uh, air and food drink wise and then a half a mile from it you have Belmar Park and then you have Bear Creek Lake which is like Belmar Park times a million uh, so a lot of adventure in Lakewood itself I don't think I covered it in things to know actually but here in Lakewood you have a ton of parks more than just Belmar Park itself so if you're looking for the outdoor Colorado lifestyle Lakewood's great because it has so many parks but then you're also just like 15 to 20 to 30 minutes away from the mountains itself not to mention Bear Creek Lake so you have a surplus of outdoor adventure your way so that covers the location of lakewood things to know about lakewood and places to go in lakewood let's finish this off with some real estate fast facts because lakewood has a very interesting rule called the one percent rule that's pretty much only in lakewood and it's that that new home builders people who build new homes can only build one percent of the amount of current residences per year what does that actually mean? Basically, let's just say for an example that there's 200,000 homes in Lakewood. I don't know how many there are. I'm sure someone in the comments will want to make me look dumb and tell me how many there are. But let's just say there's 200,000. That 1% of that is only 2,000 homes. So builders can only build 2,000 homes per year in Lakewood. So every year, 1% of the total residences. Why? Uh, to help maintain the open space, to keep them out so we don't just completely dominate it, uh, all this beautiful land with uh, homes. And there's a few other reasons, but that's a huge one, um, which sounds great, and it is. That's a really good rule. There, there's some negatives to that, potentially, depending on your opinion of it, is that since builders can't build as many homes, they're just gonna build more expensive homes. Instead of building like three $200,000 homes, there's no $200,000 homes in Denver, but you know what I'm saying. Instead of building three medium priced homes, they might build one super expensive home, which brings up the prices uh, in Lakewood overall and brings up property taxes as well. So there's some pros and the cons to that rule, but just something to know. Real estate fast fact number two, as I mentioned, Lakewood being an older community, has a lot of older homes. And with that 1% rule, there's not a lot of new homes being built. So if you're into homes that are built in the 70s, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, Lakewood's gonna be great. If you're not so much into those homes, Lakewood might not be as great. But also one big positive to Lakewood being an older community is that the landscaping is super mature, meaning there's beautiful trees, shrubbery, flowers every single place you go because all the wildlife here <laughs> not wildlife like animals but like plants and trees and everything like that uh, have had their whole lives to look big and beautiful and by the way guys if you are taking notes trying to find your perfect place to live in denver colorado i got you covered i did that work for you i created an ebook that you can download for free recapping all the communities in denver giving you the things to know places to go and real estate fast facts so you can find your perfect community in denver you can download it completely for free access immediately by uh, there's a link in the YouTube subscription. Uh, real quick, let's hit a recap.
there we have it guys things to know places to go lakewood edition once again tori drake your denver realtor uh, i love denver i love making these videos i love colorado's denver rights and i would love to help you with your real estate needs if you have any so feel free to reach out if i can be of service to you please consider subscribing i know it's really cliche to ask but i'm really trying to grow the channel and spread the good word of how beautiful denver is and a subscription a subscription from yourself would mean the world to me so please consider doing that once again guys tori drake denver realtor i appreciate you like crazy have a great day